So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here, Oliver here. And uh, today in this video, I would like uh, to show you how I connected an industrial HDMI camera to a microscope, not only to a compound microscope like I have over here, but also to a stereo microscope. As a matter of fact, I already have it connected here. It's this uh, small camera that I've got over here. Um, it uh, uh, creates an HDMI signal, um, which I directly feed into the monitor. So in this case, there is not even a computer needed, um, but it is also possible to feed it into a computer and for that you need a little adapter I'm also going to show you how I've connected that and uh, at the end of the video after I've done the unpacking and after I showed you all of the parts at the end of the video I would like to talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of using um, such a camera system and for those of you who are completely new to microscopes and microscope cameras normally what you would do is, is you would probably get yourself a USB microscope camera a dedicated microscope camera and uh, they work fine generally um, but I found a couple of advantages using the industrial cameras here um, as well which I would like to show you but what I'm going to do first is, is I'm going to first of all um, unpack uh, the camera um, and the, the adapter um, and then we're going to get started but I almost forgot uh, to say that um, all of the equipment that I'm going to show you today was not sponsored so I bought everything myself um, so it is not a sponsored video in any way and yeah I simply bought the camera two of them as a matter of fact uh, one for this microscope and one for my stereo microscope and um, so far I'm pretty happy with those so let's uh, start uh, with uh, unpacking uh, the camera it came in a very very uh, inconspicuous box yeah, we got of course uh, the power supply adapter we've uh, got our infrared remote control and this here is now the camera uh, bubble wrapped and a small um, yeah instruction manual here just a single page here uh, but honestly i think it's not even necessary because uh, it's pretty self-explanatory yes you know, let's start uh, unpacking it uh, the camera is made fully of a metal uh, you can see that the interface in the back here is uh, quite straightforward a power supply um, then a little joystick which i'm going to show you yeah, and there are also some yeah and of course the HDMI port and uh, it requires a 12 volt um, external power supply that's a little joystick uh, included with a push button and of course uh, um, everything is fairly small and compact okay and now let's uh, look at the um, reduction optics uh, because uh, the camera has a c-mount uh, you have to somehow connect it uh, to the microscope and one way is is by passing uh, the image uh, through this redu reduction optics um, it also came with uh, two adapters uh, for stereo microscopes and also microscopes uh, which have a larger um, eyepiece uh, diameter um, I'm, I'll be mounting it uh, to the photo port, to the trinocular port, uh, so these adapters are not needed. Yeah, let's uh, let's have a close look here. Yeah, all you have to do is, is you have to simply put them over um, the um, yeah the tube, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, so 30 millimeters and 30.5 millimeters uh, are the two different uh, adapters. It is also a rubber ring here, which prevents uh, the adapter from slipping. So now uh, the camera itself also has uh, a small adapter ring here. That's a C CS uh, converter. Um, essentially, the diameter stays the same, uh, but um, it only changes the distance um, uh, of the reduction optics. And sometimes it's needed, and sometimes it's not needed. Um, but this ring is really important because um, if uh, um, you do not have it and if it's needed then um, it will really uh, the focus will be completely off yeah so um, that's uh, sometimes necessary and we'll, you have to test it when it's needed so now let's uh, have a look here it's a 0.5 times uh, so this means that uh, um, the image is going to be reduced in size and this increases the field of view and it's uh, really important so let's uh, connect it uh, now with uh, um, the CCS uh, ring in, in place. So here, this is the back side again. And uh, yeah, here again, the, the little joystick, which is important because there is a built-in menu system. You can, of course, also use uh, the, um, the infrared uh, remote control, which is possible as well. Um, and uh, I, here we now are going to connect first uh, the HDMI cable. Um, and uh, even though the resolution is uh, might not appear to be very high for photographs, for pictures, it's still uh, good enough and uh, you get uh, quite uh, fast uh, um, frame rates uh, this way. You need, of course, also a power supply. So in that way, it's different than, for example, the USB um, microscope cameras. And in the back here, there's a little green LED, which actually shows that the camera is in operation. There is no separate uh, on-off switch. So I would like to feed in the signal into my computer. And for this reason, I bought 
bought myself also this uh, converter here, HDMI to USB converter. It's USB 3.0, so it's uh, fairly fast. And uh, yeah, you can then plug it in here, and then you can use uh, this, uh, um, yeah, basically adapter here just like a regular uh, camera. Yeah, so it's possible to use in OBS Studio as well and just using any pretty much any software. You do not need any specific camera software to be able to get the, the live feed from the camera. So and that's basically how it looks like. It's not, not very small really. Um, but later on I will also try to um, different adapters here. This is my old USB 2.0 camera. And what I'm going to do is I would like to also try uh, those adapters and I would like to test which ones are more suitable here. But those USB cameras are, because it's quite old, it's uh, also relatively slow, and therefore I decided to, to actually uh, yeah, use uh, a newer HDMI camera. So, uh, it's also possible to connect uh, the camera directly uh, to uh, the C-mount uh, of a photo tube without any reduction optics. Uh, so my photo tube can be um, extended and can be also pulled in and out. Um, and um, the top part here um, can be used to directly plug in the camera, like here. But later I'm going to also show you that it's possible to connect it directly without uh, the intermediate reduction optics. And uh, in this case, you simply have to remove the top part uh, of the photo tube to uh, be able to directly connect it. So we're going to now remove again the reduction optics here. And uh, I'm also going to now remove the top part um, of the photo tube. And uh, this will then yeah, give me a threading which allows me to directly connect the camera. Um, what's the advantage here? The advantage is, is, of course, that the whole system becomes more co compact. Um, so also a little bit cheaper because you do not need those um, reduction optics. But the disadvantage is, is that this will actually result in a significantly larger image because uh, this is now a uh, uh, projects now the image directly onto the sensor. Um, and of course you have to adjust the distance here as well to get a, a in focus image um, but I do not always recommend this you can try it out first uh, but I do not always recommend it because um, the field of view is not very large and you get a, uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, um, of empty magnification and it's actually the image that you see through the camera looks actually quite different than, than the one looking through the eyepieces or you can of course uh, if your microscope does not have a folded tube you can of course all look directly connect uh, yeah, the whole system um, instead uh, of one of the eyepieces, I think it does look a little bit uh, yeah, bulky, Yeah, but I think uh, still worth uh, trying out. And uh, if the microscope is sufficiently steady, there is also no possibility for it to tip over. But if you have a small light microscope, yeah, you have to make sure that everything is in balance. So now let's do a comparison. So I have uh, three of these uh, uh, reduction optics. Um, from uh, one of them which I just uh, bought and uh, two of them which I've got from old cameras and I will be measuring out the field of view by looking at this ruler here. So we'll be first uh, connecting uh, the first uh, reduction optic and it uh, requires now this uh, adapter ring again. Without that um, I'm not going to get a good image. Uh, uh, yeah. So and uh, let's start uh, with, uh, with this one here first. Yeah, with the one that I uh, recently bought and that's what I'm getting. So that's the field of view. It's about what? Um, yeah, 18, 19, uh, 19 millimeters across and when I zoom in all the way to the maximum and I'm going to now pause the video here, um, then um, I will see the following and I would like to just show you. I need an arrow over here and I want you to have a look here right at the edge. Do you see this? Yeah, and there, it's blue, right? Uh, so that is chromatic aberration. And uh, you, know, you can actually also see that maybe there's a little bit of, of yellow fringing here on, on the side as well. Um, and that is uh, a the chromatic aberration which is not visible when you're looking through the microscope directly. So this is, seems to be indeed coming from uh, the adapter um, itself. So let's uh, just uh, continue again here. Okay, so that's something that you might want to look out for. So now let's uh, test the second one. So that's uh, from another microscope uh, camera that I have. And look at this here. Here, uh, the field of view is significantly larger. It's uh, 26, 27, 28 millimeters. So actually, that's probably the one that I'll be using because of a much wider field of view. But look um, on the corners here, you can actually see that um, it actually becomes uh, darker at the corners. It's called vignetting. Um, and uh, is nothing unusual. Um, it's not really disturbing a lot, 
Um, but uh, yeah, it's simply something that I, I noticed, okay? Uh, probably also has to do something uh, with the larger field of view. The larger the field of view, maybe the stronger the vignetting, yeah? But otherwise, I think uh, that's uh, already a very decent one. And look, here again, we can see that there is a little bit of uh, this purple fringing and chromatic aberration is quite notable. So now let's try the last one. And in this case, I have to remove this uh, little uh, ring here to directly connect uh, the the reduction ad uh, adapter. And here I've got, what, 25 and a half. And again, here we see some chromatic aberration here um, on the side. And this actually means that I will be probably using, um, yeah, this um, adapter here um, for my stereo microscope because this one gives me the widest field of view. Yeah, and uh, um, essentially, now I would like to also show you a little bit uh, about the menu system here. You can operate the menu using the remote control, of course, uh, um, or by directly using the joystick. And the first scare, oh my gosh, everything's in Chinese, okay? No, but look, uh, it is possible to actually change the language. And I zoomed in a little bit. It's a little bit smaller, yeah, the menu. Um, but it's possible to change it around. And there are quite a few settings that you can adjust. Um, you can, of course, also adjust to the screen size. And of course, I'm using 16 to 9. Um, but for my different monitors, uh, if you want to display the image directly, you can do that. And then it quickly blinks and then you, it resets, the, um, it re resets the, the, the screen aspect ratio. Okay, um, so that is uh, quite, uh, quite a useful thing here. Let's uh, reset it back. And uh, there are, of course, also other things that you can adjust. For example, the white balance mode can be um, adjusted here. Yeah, um, so you can adjust the red and the blue. Yeah, this uh, HDR. Yeah, and there's also an advanced settings where you can. Uh, yeah, uh, give this gives you a lot of possibilities to play around with, right? Um, yeah, so in that sense, it's a pretty uh, nice, uh, no nonsense camera. Um, and uh, up to this point, I'm quite satisfied with it. So now I would like uh, to talk a little bit about the advantages and the disadvantages of using uh, an HDMI camera. Um, and the advantages and disadvantages really depend on what you want to use them for. I, in my uh, particular case, um, when I connected the camera here to a monitor, I wanted to have a very straightforward and simple way of, of connecting it uh, directly to a display um, without the need of actually starting a computer. So when I want to do some videos um, like I'm doing right now, I do not want to um, start the computer and start uh, the software and so on, but I simply want to switch on the main switch and then after a few seconds I can already show you um, essentially what's, uh, what's on screen. And you can see also, it's a second advantage, that there is practically almost no delay. So immediately you're able to get a um, yeah a, a live review, um, no delay, um, um, not that there is much delay when you're using USB, um, uh, but um, in any case um, it gives you a very very quick and smooth uh, um, uh, video video feed. And one of the reasons is and that is already the disadvantage. The reason is that the resolution, of course, is much lower than, for example, using a USB microscope camera. Some of those cameras have, I don't know, let's say five megapixels. Uh, that is way more than, for example, um, H, uh, the full HD that I have here. Um, and uh, I, however, also want to say is that you do not need this uh, camera resolution in most cases, because this resolution in many cases is, is even higher than that, what the microscope is able to provide. So essentially, um, for most cases, uh, I think that those industrial um, HDMI cameras are perfectly fine uh, and work perfectly well. And then another disadvantage uh, that those cameras have, and that is might be actually a yeah a, a so-called a knockout feature for some of you, is that it does not they do not allow for a manual control. Um, so this basically means that the uh, camera very quickly adjusts the exposure. Um, so if you look at a bright or dark, uh, I don't know if you're able to see this very brief briefly. You see, it quickly adjusts uh, the exposure, and this makes it very convenient uh, when I, for example, want to use that, um, um, yeah, for example, for live streaming uh, or for regular observation. It's perfectly fine, but it is not very useful um, if you want to actually do some image stitching. And this is when you take pictures, overlapping pictures, and combine them into one final larger picture. And um, because uh, at the different places on the specimen, um, yeah, you have different exposures. And and uh, this uh, can actually make it a little bit more difficult for the software to combine the image and or yeah, you do not uh, get consistent colors and consistent brightness. So that would be a disadvantage um, for, those, uh, um, for those cameras. I just wanted to mention those um, that 
yeah, also to illustrate a little bit that there is probably not one single camera system that uh, fits all needs and fits all sizes. Um, it simply depends uh, a bit uh, for what you want to use them. And with that, I'm going to basically uh, leave it. Uh, I hope that uh, this video was informative uh, for you. I wish you all the best. Uh, happy micro hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye bye.